back to the never-ending saga of Wales. Conferred powers versus reserved powers and where we are now. What happened that we've ended up where we are now? When you have a um, subsidiary parliament, such as um, the Welsh Assembly is, then uh, you can define its rights and its privileges and responsibilities in one of two ways. One is conferred powers. In other words, you give these powers in dribs and drabs, sometimes scores, sometimes hundreds over the years, yeah. what I would call a confetti system. Yeah. And you've got to look at dozens and dozens of different sources uh, in order to find out exactly where you are. And you still then don't know. Much simpler and in a sweeping way, such as is the case with Scotland and with Northern Ireland, is reserve power. When you so transfer, that move was a good one. You transfer everything, yes. save A, B and C, C, and you know where you stand. But of course, they've undone that by saying, we give you reserve powers, uh, save A, B and C and 200 reservations, which completely kills the idea of a reserved system. And devolution. Yes. So why did they do that? I don't think it was done out of spite or mendacity toward Wales at all. I think it had something to do with this, with the uh, Secretary of State for Wales, perhaps in a rather um, modest way, going from one department to the other and say to the head of department, I say, old boy, <laughs> are there any reservations that you'd like? All right. And what each and every one of them said, not so much by word, but in their thoughts and in their hearts. We reserve everything we possibly can, however small, however trivial, however niggardly, and however utterly nonsensical not to be part and of the... And in many ways system. insulting. Insulting. That's the point. If they'd set out to destroy the whole concept uh, of a reserve powers constitution, they couldn't have done a better job of it. So it says a lot about the mentality of the establishment. Yes, it means, it means you see, not only that they lack a basic understanding of Wales as a land and nation, but that they lack an understanding as well of what I would call the geometry of uh, devolution. The geometry which uh, is based upon some sort of moral uh, and um, legal balance. In other words, the subsidiary parliament says we are not concerned with succession to the crown. We're not concerned with defence. We're not concerned with foreign policy. We're not concerned with international finance. But on the other hand, you are not concerned with domestic matters. Yeah. And in the same way, we keep out of your affairs. You keep out of our affairs. And if you have that mutual trust and partnership, then you've got a future. And that's missing. That's missing. Totally missing. That's the short It's point. not missing in terms of Scotland. No. No Northern Ireland. No. So what is it about Wales and England then? Well, you look at the reservations. Um, one could go through dozens of them that are ludicrous. Dangerous dogs. Prostitution. Hovercraft. Sharp axes and knives. Um, collections for yeah. charity, charity collections, uh, yes. purposes. Licensing. Yeah. Like something that's been devolved to Wales since 1881. Why do they do it? They do it because there is a colonial prejudice against Wales. We were the first colony, the 13th century. You seriously colony. believe this? Well, they believe I, it. I, 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 don't, they believe I it. don't doubt you. They believe it. You seriously believe that's where they are in their mind? Well, ask yourself this, this question, which I think is a fair test. <coughs> Just imagine 70 years ago, when you had a colonial office, and Jim Griffiths was, 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 the, was the head of that, of that yeah. uh, department. Do you think that Jim Griffiths would have gone to a colony in the Caribbean, a British colony in the Caribbean, or a British colony in Africa, and said, these are the reservations? It couldn't have been done. It no. would have been impossible in the context of a colony. Yeah. Why the Dickens is it possible in the case of Wales? Pam. Well, you know what I think, and probably you think the same. They have an attitude towards Wales that they think we are part of them. Yes, yes, it's a, it's a timeless, eternal 
prejudice that will take us a long, long time to shake away. But uh, we've got to challenge it. Yeah. Do you think... What what's your advice to the uh, you know there are all these M's and the MPs? I found the I found the debate in the House of Lords reading it far more invigorating, far more strong in relation to Wales and devolution than the pathetic response well, of Labour MPs in the House of Commons. It's kind of you and you may be well you in may the House of right. Commons. I watched it on television. Yeah. I thought it was pathetic. Well, they were limited as to time. And they never really managed to get hold of that, uh, that aspect of it at all. Yeah, but I think you're too kind to but them. I think they don't understand the nature of Wales. They I don't, don't think they believe. They don't think of Wales as a land and nation as often as they should. Yeah. That's the point. So what's your advice now to close this well, well up? In the, in the, um, what would you uh, tell Carrie Jones and in, all the people? In the, in the debate, I put forward an amendment which... Um, would mean that the Secretary of State for Wales, immediately the Act is in force, sets up a working party to report within three years to Parliament to describe how each and every one of those reservations is working or not working. Yeah. And to recommend as to which one should be That's dropped, right. like a hot call. That's right. Yes. So let's hope the Welsh Assembly follows your call, don't you think? I have. Uh, I hope you're very Because surprised. I think, you see, I've heard you say before in one of those debates that we don't think expansionist enough as true, a people. True, true. Do you feel that is... You have to think big, you have to ask big. And if you ask big, you might get big things. But if you think small and ask small, you'll get smaller things than you're asking for. There we are. Now, there's the words of wisdom from someone who's been around a long time in politics and the law. He knows what he's talking about. Thank you, sir.